Hey, good morning and happy Sunday to everybody. Uh, it's 5.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on Sunday. I usually would have released a video by now, but I've been working long and hard on this video, believe me. Uh, I've been researching this now since 3 a.m. this morning. Um, about Trump's EPA, mercury emissions, his war on green, green energy, um, and once again, Trump claims to know more than anybody. Well, actually, his exact quote was, he's got a very natural instinct for science, he claims. Uh, science, scientists have been leaving the EPA, and, uh, or at least real science scientists have been leaving the EPA for, for three years now. Um, Trump reduced the budget of the EPA, the Environment, Environmental Protection Agency, by one-third, the largest reduction of any agency by far. Uh, here's the thing that I found is, of course, it's about money and the lobbyists. The lobbyists have contributed millions, 34 million, um, just the, Trump's first year in office. Lobbyists, coal, uh, coal and oil lobbyists have contributed to his campaign. Here's another interesting thing. For Barack Obama, they contributed one out of every $36 came from the coal and oil industry. For Trump, it's one out of every $10. By far, the coal and oil industry are lining the president's pockets, President Trump's pockets, with money. Uh, and this, this makes sense. His rolling back of mercury emissions from coal-fired plants. Barack Obama put a lot of regulations in because, because mercury emissions are proven to cause birth defects in pregnant women, and brain damage in young children, proven. And along with these mercury emissions are fine particulates that come, out, come out, out of the stacks that cause lung cancer, heart disease, all forms of cancer and disease, okay? Now, this is Trump's EPA. Scott Pruitt was the initial, uh, his initial man in the EPA, and then I think it's uh, Webster now. Now, what I, from what I was reading is they changed the math. They messed with the math. Uh, they made it appear that it was a lot, you know, so basically what they said was, okay, so a, a couple hundred women get, uh, birth defects and a couple thousand kids get brain damage. What they did was they did not count all the fine particulates that cause all these lung cancers, the heart disease. They didn't call, they didn't count that stuff. They only counted one particular pollution aspect of these mercury emissions, so what, essentially what they did was they, they messed with the math and they downplayed the danger of these coal-fired plants in order to, to make, it, make, it, make, the, make it cheaper. For, for the, make, so there's more, more uh, profits from, for coal and oil, which is the result of the lobbyists paying. You know, lobbyists pay him millions to put him in office, and he returns the favor by reducing the regulations and putting more profits in their pockets. Meanwhile, in five to ten years, the birth defects in women, pregnant women, will go up. The brain damage in our children will go up. I mean, these are proven, proven things that proven facts that these particulates cause these, these, these problems. And Obama was concerned about these things and regulated these, these industries and had them spend billions in expensive equipment to regulate the mercury emissions. And, and, and also, Trump has deregulated our water, so our water is less clean. There's more mercury in our water, more of these pollutants, more of these cancer-causing agents. It's a proven fact. But because we've seen a rise in jobs, a rise in the stock market, well, basically, the rich getting richer, the owners of these coal, these coal and oil plants, Trump's friends, getting richer and richer, nobody's paying attention. And, and these, these are results that aren't going to pop up for five, ten years. The birth defects, the cancer. Um, this, is the, this is the stuff that, you know, initially I thought I was just angry with Trump, but I'm scared. I'm scared of where the world is heading. Another troubling aspect I found was he disbanded the science in Kansas City, Missouri, the scientists that um, study evasive insects. 
and the damage it does to our crops. These science, this, this aspect of the EPA has now been disbanded. So what, what we have in this country now that is watching for any evasive insects coming in that could, say, wipe out our corn crops or, or whatever, apparently we don't really have any protection against that anymore. Um, like I said, and in the fall, in the years coming, I think it's going to become a lot clearer. Uh, I mean, was it all worth it? The few extra jobs, the few, the rise in the stock market, or was it worth paying for birth defects with, uh, brain damaged kids? Um, these are the things that scare the hell out of me. Um, uh, some of the other, we all know that he claims he, he doesn't believe, I, I actually seen a quote where he doesn't think asbestos causes cancer. I couldn't believe these. These are things I I, I don't believe. He's I, I when I hear this, I'm like this. That can't be real. This has to be a joke, but it's not. It's not. He, he's actually said that that the science that proves asbestos causing cancer isn't isn't right because he knows more about science than anybody. Um, you know, and this has to do with his his. On you know, whenever you see him rattling on about windmills. Or people having to flush their toilets 15 times, you know there's something in the works. Um, his thing against windmills and dead birds, dead, you want to see a bird graveyard? Look under windmills. This is, it has nothing to do with birds. It has to do with the lobbyists giving him an extraordinary record amount of contributions. The, the coal and oil industry lining his pockets. It has nothing to do with birds. It has nothing to do with people, people's uh, home prices going down because they're in view of these. First of all, these windmills aren't around any homes to begin with. He, he makes it sound like we're putting these windmills, these huge windmills in residential areas, which we're not. The, these, these babbling rants by him about windmills it has nothing to do with, with it birds with with uh, then he goes on to say in these windmill rants about uh how these when they manufacture these windmills supposedly they spew all this stuff in the air the manufacture of these windmills which is a complete falsehood again just complete lies he's doing this because the coal and oil lobbyists are putting more into his pocket than any president in history He's, he, they're, they're, they're funding his 2020 run for office. Again, campaign finance uh, reform is one of the biggest, one of my biggest issues. I thought about this. What's my biggest issue? If I'm going to vote for somebody, oh, I will vote for somebody in 2020, but I thought about it. It's like, what is the most important to me? And I think lobbyists, the, this, this dirty situation we have where... Corporations and the wealthy are basically their concerns. They're they're paying for the the politicians, and in the end, it's their concerns that are being their money their money making concerns that are being coming up first, and, and not us. You know, not not the birth defects down the road, not the brain damage. None of that matters as as long as the the thirty four million in contributions rolls in every year for Trump. One out of every ten dollars contributed in 2000, this 2016 run. One out of every ten dollars was from the oil and coal industry. Now you compare that to Barack Obama. One out of every thirty-six dollars for him was from the oil and coal industry lobbyists. So they're all bought and paid for, and we need finance reform. But by far, Trump is profiting from the oil and coal industry more than any other president in history, by far. And this is what, he, this is, what, is, bringing to the, what is causing these rants about windmills. And I'm going to bring up this other thing that keeps popping up with Trump. His, these, these bizarre rants about people having to flush their toilets 15 times in a row. And people in showers, because they're just getting little drips and drabs, and they have to stay in the shower for two hours. Now, I was wondering, I'm like, where is this coming from? And I, I'm sure it goes back to something. There's, there's some reason. Trump isn't concerned about people flushing their toilets 15 times. It has something to do with, with uh, water pollution, I'm sure. Um, 
and probably has something to do with these these mercury emissions and and lowering regulations. He, in other words, he I'm sure that he is getting paid by one of these industries. He's getting contributions so that he'll deregulate the the water pollution and the air pollution, and we pay for it with our health. Um, that's the bottom line. But this, from what I found this morning, the most troubling thing was the mercury emissions. Um, and then the evasive insects causing crop damage that, that we're no longer concerned about. How we're falling behind the rest of the world. The, the rest of the world is all moving towards electric hydropower, solar power, wind power. And and because Trump wants this, this, this lobby, the lobbyist money from the coal and oil industry, He's propping up this this coal industry that that should have been gone with the 1800s. Um, they're lining his pockets with money, and it, we continue to pollute the air with this this crap. And overall, the Earth is going to run out of coal and oil in 50 years anyway, and then we're all going to be screwed. Or let, let me let me <laughs> let me rephrase that: our kids and our grandkids are going to be screwed. Because we're going to be so far behind the rest of the world in green technology, in, in, in solar technology, because of Trump. I was reading one of the scariest things is down the road, is the results of all of this. We're not, this is stuff that we're not going to see this year or next year. The birth defects, the uh, brain damage, the invasive insects, the, the, the overall pollution. But down the road... That's why I wonder, too, is uh, I don't have kids. I don't have children. But uh, I'm sure most Trump supporters probably have children. And they're going to have grandchildren. Or they do have grandchildren. And I, I'm amazed about how it doesn't concern them that they're so concerned about brown people coming into this country. They'd rather focus on that than the future of their children. That their grandkids might be born with with birth defects or with or end up with brain damage because of Trump's allowing this mercury crap into the air. But apparently, their fear of brown people once again fear comes into play here, and uh, the politicians telling them that uh, we should be scared of the brown people because they're rapists and murderers and gang members, and that should be our focus right now. Um, America for the white people, apparently, is the most important thing to Trump supporters right now, above the environment, above pollution, above their grandkids and their kids' health in the future. So I had all this stuff written down, all these percentages and facts written down, but I, I don't do well when I go that route. So I'm, I do the best video when I just talk from the heart. I do the research. I try to remember as much as I can, and I, I get the general gist of what scares me, of, of what I see as the future, and that's how I make these videos. So I have this board in front of me that I didn't even pay attention to with all these statistics written on it. But suffice it to say, uh, Trump's war on the environment or his love of his contributions from the coal and oil industry is a scary thing these days. And once again, I think that uh, campaign finance reform. So these, these, the, the lure of this money you know, for politicians to do the bidding of corporations, to ignore pollution, to ignore our health over profits. So that will be less of a danger in the future. I think that is one of the most important topics for uh, 2020. And that concludes my video for today. You all have a great Sunday and I'll talk to you later.